Hello and welcome to my mate and flamingo tribute, practice build with pine and ply. This is part one of five because I felt I had to share as much of this experience as I can. Before I invested $120 on a decent body blank, I decided to make a guitar body from cheap wood for practice. So here I am building the body blank out of pine and ply. I bought this wood from a general hardware supply store for around $25. I added ply because I felt that I needed to build up the blank to the thickness of a standard Stratocaster body. Double the thickness of the pine plus two sheets of thin ply added up to 44.5mm, or one and three quarter inches. I could have gotten away with a body that was only 38mm thick, but with the ply down the middle it felt like it would make the centre join structurally stronger. At the time I didn't know where to get proper wood glue that is generally used to glue bodies together, so I decided to use liquid nails. I didn't trust general PVA wood glue and I needed the body to stay together. Using a router guided by a template is the easiest way for me to get the shape I needed. So I made a template. It is easier to shape a piece of MDF than to manually shape a guitar body with files. I use my dad's scroll saw because I don't have one. I do have a jigsaw rigged up under a routing table that I could have used, but I felt that I would make a more exact cut with this scroll saw. In the end, I guess I just wanted to check out how good of a job it would do using the scroll saw. This is the first body build I have ever attempted, so I tried to strictly follow the methods I had learnt from YouTube videos. I will make a shout out video one day soon to all the guitar related channels that I have learnt from, or the ones that are simply my favourite. I will also share any other YouTubers that have helped me along the way, that aren't specifically guitar related, but helped me develop my skills in either woodworking or painting with my air guns. The main rules I applied was to use templates, to jigsaw the body, as I don't have access to a bandsaw, and route the edges to the template with a flush trim bit. This is actually one of the first things I had used my new second hand router for. I found it hard to buy the flush trim bits with the top guide bearing. The more commonly available flush trim bits have the bearing at the bottom and are used to trim off excess of a veneer off the edge of a tabletop for example. As the guitar shape template sits on the top, this is where the bearing needs to be.
Here I shaped the template to fit the neck to use when routing the neck pocket later on. I sanded back the wood filler where I put some additional screws in the body. I was very careful to locate these screws in the body where I would not need to cut into later for any shaping or routing. I sunk small screws into the body so they would hold onto the top, middle and bottom layers in case the liquid nails glue failed at all. So here I go for the first routing attempt ever. At the time I thought of all this as being practice for when I would build the body again out of more expensive wood. So if any major mistakes were made, I would chalk it all up to experience. As you may have figured by now, I chose the quickest and easiest method to build a guitar body. From all the methods to use and types of bodies that I could have built, I aimed at a strat type body for the best chance at a successful outcome. Aim low, I always say. <laughs> As per the title, this body shape is that of a Maiden Flamingo. I call it a tribute because I did not just pick it at random to use as the inspiration. All through the years since my sister and I got into guitars, our dad would say now and then, I used to have an electric guitar once, but I sold it. I would have kept it if I knew I would have kids that would be into guitars. He would always say, it was a Flamingo and I never asked the brand, but I would always just picture a solid body guitar of no real identifiable shape that was pink. I had never really thought to look one up until recently when I started planning to build a guitar body. I had to ask him what brand it was, so he told me it was a Maiton, and I Google image searched it on my phone. When I first saw it, it took me back at first, and was hard to get my head around the shape, but it actually grew on me after a while. So I've ended up making the guitar that my dad once owned. I thought I would give it a shot because at least it would be a bit unique and not as often copied. They were only made between 1963 and 1965 at the Maiden factory in Australia and at the moment I can only find one or two videos demonstrating a flamingo, so they are quite rare. Being an Australian guitar is the other thing that pushed me to make this guitar shape. I downloaded the most flat on photo of a Maiden Flamingo, sized it up in Photoshop and defined a center line. With regards to the size, I could only guess how big it should be based on the width of the fretboard. Considering a lot of the technical aspects would be a challenge for me to replicate, such as the Bigsby style trim, the bridge, and the pickup types, it gave me the freedom to design the rest of the specs myself. I thought I would get myself a Gibson humbucker, a Strat single coil, and a P90 or a soap bar pickup for the bridge. So I bought a cheap set of two soap bar pickups. I had an Alnico 5 single coil pickup which was spare from the PF graphic decal project as I only used two on that project. I also bought a second-hand 2015 Gibson Les Paul Burst Bucker Pro for the neck position. All of these pickups and the first wiring harness I assembled as part of this project ended up being transferred over to the second build I made out of Queensland Mabel. When I decided to not discard this guitar, I just used all the spare parts I had set aside from other Squire projects. For the body shaping, I bought two top bearing flush trim bits. I bought a 25mm and a 45mm bit because I knew that I would have to trim the sides back in two rounds. The smaller bit to take down the top half running along the template and then the second would run along the first cut to complete the bottom half. 
I bought this router through Australia's free online trading website, which is usually for domestic sales, but it turned out that this was listed by a second-hand shop for $139 Australian.
I raised up the body on an old biscuit tin with some two-sided tape to stop it from sliding around. As you can see, I am in lack of a vise or bench clamps, so when it comes to holding something down, I use what I have available. This long plank of wood is part of a bed frame and I used some regular clamps on both ends to hold it down to the bench. What I have heard is that you should not make a router bit work too hard and cut too much material away in one part. The biggest issue I had to deal with here was keeping the router on the face of the template and later the body. If I let the off side of the router down, the bit could take a gouge out of the side of the body. This was one of my main focuses when I was routing the sides. It's, I simply had to stay at 90 degrees to the surface to cut the sides nice and square. With the weight of this router, that was a bit of a challenge.
There is the flush trimmed body. That strange looking outline at the top of the body was just an alternate shaping idea that I had scrapped. While I am talking about the shape, I did not attempt any cutaways like the body cut on the back or an arm cutaway on the front. I didn't want to start messing around with files and reshaping by hand on this first project. This split in the body is exactly why I inserted screws into the body. At least this repair gave me an opportunity to demonstrate how I did sink the other screws into the core of the body. This edge split apart about 48 hours after I had trimmed the edges. I guess the wood was resettling after being glued, screwed, clamped and cut. Looking back, it was most likely the removal of surface area containing glue. I countersunk the head of the screws as far as required, so no matter how much sanding I would do later, I would not hit them. As I mentioned before, I would keep the location well away from anywhere I had planned on routing or shaping the body later. I filled the countersunk hole with wood filler. The other screws were preventative, but this one was to fix an issue that arose. The additional glue was just for good luck, as I know that once the screw was in this location, there wouldn't be any more issues with layers splitting apart. This does seem like a bit of a hack, but as this was the practice build, I did what I could to keep it from falling apart. For a body made of pine and ply, I thought this was acceptable, and this would not be an issue at all on the solid two-piece blank I would later buy for the real build. So that's the end of part one. I will see you again in part two.